There we go. All right, everybody. Stretch it out. Lock it in. Welcome, my friends, to another episode of Man vs. World. As always, we are joined by our good buddy, Pete. Pete, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Mark? I'm doing pretty pretty fantastic, actually, because um, I got, I think, the outline for the first of a brand new series that's going to be coming out here soon, which I think is going to knock the socks off of all of you guys. I haven't really done anything like this for quite a while now since I did like the Enter the Omni Game series and the Man of Action series. So uh, got some good stuff cooking for you guys. And in fact, it's got some even more interesting pieces to it that I am excited to share. So stay tuned for that coming up on the channel here soon. Um, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I think I, I, it's been a while since I've done some real kind of like meaty content here on YouTube. And this is going to be uh, probably hopefully my best stuff yet this is the stuff that i've really been cooking and s simmering and you know distilling for years now and uh i'm really excited to unveil it to all of you so that'll be really cool the the self-mastery club is pretty pretty great uh you know i was talking to one of the guys in there um from who's been in, been in there yesterday and he was saying how you know whatever you were trying to do with the vanguard uh well you know you finally nailed it this is it this is what i was looking for so uh if you're looking for a community if you're looking for uh content if you're looking for basically what you need to become the man that you want to be I think it's the Self Mastery Club. So if you're interested in checking out uh, what we're doing there, it's it's all about habit change, mindset transformation, and just really taking your life by the horns and becoming that man that you know you can be. But you just maybe need an extra push. You need some help because you keep falling into distraction and to vice or to whatever it is. So if you want to get in on that, go uh, and click the link in the description and you can sign up for our web class where we teach you some of the self-mastery concepts for free. And then we also tell you about the self-mastery club as well. So please check that out. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. I'm really digging it in, in the club there. I cannot wait for it to be a, a mobile app because right. I don't know. Am I supposed to? Maybe I'm not supposed to talk about that, but it will be <laughs> a mobile app at some point. I'm so yes. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be sweet. Yes, yes, it's uh, in the works, in the works. So more updates on that as it comes. But uh, today, Pete, what do, what do we got? So today uh, we got a clip here from, uh, I don't know how to say his name, so I apologize in advance, but his username is something like Adam, and he's from the community, and he sent me this clip that touches on kind of two opposing views being voiced on YouTube right now with regards to what the priority should be for men in their 20s. You see, some people are saying, forget about chasing uh, women right now. You're a young guy. Just go get some status real quick. Then when you're in your 30s or so and you have the male advantage, as first man calls it, at that point, you can go out and you can start attracting a higher level woman. Guys like in this clip here propose that Maybe the majority of men would be better off setting some sort of benchmark to measure their success with women so that they can focus on getting success with women first. And then with the confidence boost that comes from that, go and build status from there. So check out this clip real quick and then we'll we'll kind of discuss so this. So let me so let me make sure I get this right, because you're breaking up a little bit. You're oh, saying yeah. like there's kind of two ideas out there. There is one that says, hey, if you're a young guy, you should focus on what was the first one? You said they should focus on building their status first. Status kind of first. Ignore women. Right. Right. Versus and, chasing chicks and forgetting about status okay. for now. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Let's see what, let's see what this guy has to say. 
you're not going to be able to do the first man route of trying to chase success and build a business, you know, and in your 30s and now you're the alpha male. You come out of your cave as the alpha male. You come out at the cave. The world has moved. You know, meanwhile, the world world has moved on. Things have changed. You're out of touch and you come out of your cave and be like, oh, yeah, see, you guys, look, I got this little penthouse. You know, no one gives a fuck, bro. You should never feel guilty about wanting to get laid, guys. Don't let any of these YouTubers, Hamza, First Man, whoever the fuck else you guys watch, do not let anybody make you feel bad for wanting to get laid and get um, a sex life in your 20s because I prom it's, it's good. It's healthy. For me, it was the right choice. Spending that one to three years doing my thing, just trying to get laid as much as I can was the most was the best decision I could have made. Interesting. So I would want to hear more from him about that. But I've never heard anyone say that, that like just chasing ass and trying to get laid was the best thing that could, they could ever do for themselves. Now, I think you got these two kind of extremes where it's like one guy's like, go into your cave and then you can become, you can acquire all this status. And then once you have this status and you can go out and compete on the dating market and win, because if you don't do that, well then, you know, all those guys who are already established, they're going to get all the girls. Um, Okay, I see what he's saying there. You know, in a hyper competitive dating market, like if you're trying to grab, you know, the cream of the crop off the Tinder app, well then, yeah, you might need to put in quite a bit of time to, you know, get yourself up to that level if you really want to make sure that you're able to compete against the other guys who are trying to swoop in on that. Okay, get. I see what they're saying. Now, this guy is saying, well, screw that, you know, like, I don't want to wait all that time. And, you know, I need to, you know, you're you're a man now and you got to it's healthy and natural for you to be chasing women just now. And, you know, do that. OK, like, I mean, yes, you you will have a sex drive that entire time. Like you will want to connect with women and to just deny yourself that uh, pursuit during that entire time period, your entire 20s. That's quite a sacrifice. Right. Um I think the answer is somewhere in the middle, but then also in a completely different place. <laughs> so by in the middle, I mean like you can build yourself up, you can be establishing yourself, and you can also be dating. Like it's they're not mutually exclusive things, right? Like yes, it's possible that if you're dating women or you're chasing women or whatever, uh, that's less energy that will be available to go into your grind. Um, and it's also possible that, uh, you know, while you're grinding and things like that, it can prevent you from, I don't know, I guess, giving enough energy to the, the women to, to do it right, you know, to be on top of all the texting and bullshit and stuff like that, that modern dating tends to have. But like, you could still just practically speaking, do a balanced approach. And if you've got game, okay, if you've got social skills, if you know how to present yourself, if you are fit, then you're not going to need to go into a hole for, you know, a decade to be able to date. All right. Like that, that whole notion is crazy. <laughs> like what I'm kind of like what I'm seeing here is fear on both extremes. On one extreme, it's like the fear of, oh my God, if I don't, if I don't get off, if I don't find chicks, if I don't get girls to give me sexual validation, like right now, I'm going to die. Uh, and then you've got the other guys who are like, Oh, I'm so afraid of sexual rejection that I got to go into a hole for a decade to to make myself better enough so that no one will reject me and I won't have to compete. I'll just be the top dog. Um, and I think both those approaches are kind of crazy. And I think they're just exacerbated by our modern culture, particularly our dating culture that just wants guys to uh, well that that really commoditizes the dating market. And we've talked about that on here where it's like, if you're, if it's just a status swap, right? That's how a lot of people approach, uh, dating. Cause it's just like Tinder is basically just becomes a, a, a marketplace where you see people's stats. If they're not displayed directly, then you gather them within the first few, you know, text exchanges. Um, and then it's like, Oh, you have favorable status. I would like to, sh I will trade you access to my body so that I have access to your status. And like, that's the general transaction that's made between <laughs> men and women. Um, and it's like, when you're playing that game, then that's how people come up with these crazy extreme ideas. I think like what we've talked about here before is that you need to separate yourself from that culture in general. I think women are dying 
to, to leave that culture. At least some of them are, not all of them, okay? Obviously, there's a huge amount of people that are sucked into that world. But the reality is there's a lot of really wonderful people, a lot of wonderful women out there who are not plugged into that, who feel or, or are only in that to the extent to which they feel like they have to be in order to meet people, right? And so it's like there's plenty of like women out there who are just normal, and they just want another normal guy. It's like they're figuring their life out in their 20s and there's other and they're they're open to dating a guy who's figuring himself out in his 20s as long as he's a good guy who presents himself well, who can show that he has high value even if he hasn't, you know, conquered the world yet, okay? So, I think that's the better way to do it is just do it all, right? Date, work, but then most specifically, make sure that you are trying to pursue something real. If you're just chasing ass, well, you know, that's all you're going to get. You know, that's, you're not going to find anything more. <laughs> um, does that make any sense to you, Pete, as a young person? Uh, it does. And if I break up here, if my Internet's breaking up, just smile and nod. Just pretend that I'm saying something good. Um, okay. here, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, cause know, the recording will catch what you're saying anyway. So it's exactly. mostly just my problem. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I sit, one of the big points that he's making here in this video that it's not really shown in this clip is that when you have a goal in mind with regards to pursuing women and you meet that goal and you prove that you are in fact attracted to the opposite sex, you get a lot more confidence and that is very true and that's a big big reason why he's saying that guys should do this now here's the problem with that because i've done i've fallen into that mistake in the past not quite in the same way that he has not quite to the extreme that he has but on a, in a very uh, in a very sort of christian way i guess you could say you know doing doing this kind of approach of seeing, hey, am I actually attractive to women? Let me find out. Although it gives you confidence yourself, it is manipulative towards the other person in this equation, which is the women that you're dealing with. Yeah, because you're using them. You are using them. And that is not okay in my estimation. You know, some guys don't care. That's fine. As far as I'm concerned, chasing girls for the purpose of gaining confidence yourself and then dumping them later, it's just not an appropriate reason to build a relationship with someone. You know, maybe that's a, maybe that's a little more. Well, so no, you're, you're, I mean, you're talking a little more about, square than most people like to look at it, but it is, it is true. Well, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I don't think a relationship should be this kind of objectifying sort of thing where it's like, I'm here to use you in a certain way, you know, it's like, right. I'm trying to just get something from you. So right? like the goal should be to create a true win-win, like to create something, a, an additive relationship. Like what this guy in this clip is talking about is like, Hey, I was massively insecure. I had this hole in me and I needed this, these women to fill that hole, to make me feel, Oh, I'm good. You know? Um, or I guess, you know, counter counter argument to that, he'd say, no, I don't have any hole. I'm totally, you know, I was totally fine and confident to begin with. I was just horny. Um, well, like, if that was the case, if he was really just horny, why did, why was it such a good experience for you? Why was it, why, what, why did it, why was it, why was it so transformative for you? Because this guy still seems pretty young. And my thought is that in the process, uh, this transformative process for him, transformative process form of hooking up with a bunch of chicks, what ended up happening was he had a very conditional sense of self-worth beforehand. He felt like, all right, well, I'm not good unless I get women to like me. And boom, all of a sudden he gets women to like him and he gets this conditional sense of self-worth. Awesome, but the problem is that's a fake sense of self-worth. The real kind of self-worth, the kind that's truly rock solid, is based upon a connection to your dignity. And your dignity, that's unconditional. That's something that you learn how to hold whether women are smiling at you or whether they're scowling at you. And it doesn't sound like that's what he gained. It sounds like he gained kind of like the conditional confidence, which is great as long as the conditions are met, right? But they're not always gonna be met. So if you wanna really find that true solidity, that true, uh, sense of purpose and self-mastery and unshakable confidence. It's about pursuing that 
that highest expression of yourself. And then also honoring that highest expression of other people and not reducing them into some kind of like status trophy that, you know, you can use to make yourself feel good. So, I mean, I'm right with you there, Pete. Um, And a lot of people, they would call this corny. They would call this square. Uh, But hey, you know, it's like the reality is you're setting yourself up for pain if you don't, if you don't do this, you are. You're just setting yourself up to just keep perpetuating this wound of lack around sexual, female sexual validation, right? It's like until you learn how to be good in and of yourself, you know, this is why we promote so much stuff around like, you know, no fab, quitting porn, that sort of thing. Um, you know, even, even just chastity before marriage and that kind of stuff is because until you get that locked down, you have this lifelong hole inside of you that you will only get intermittently filled when you're getting sexual validation. Wouldn't it be better to just always feel full, right? And this doesn't mean that you don't still have a sex drive, right? Like you can have a sex drive that is frustrated while still having a complete sense of uh, peace and connection and to your, your own worth and value, right? Like you can be sexually frustrated but still content in and of yourself, okay? And that's what like people I think miss is that there's there's different pieces inside of yourself. There are different pains that you can have. And the deepest pain, that feeling of inadequacy, that does not get solved by this behavior. And it also doesn't get solved by holing away for 10 years and then being able to get a bunch of girls to like you because you've got a lot of status. Because you know, guess what? They only like you for your status, okay? That doesn't, that does, like, that's conditional. Okay, that doesn't give you the unconditional sense of confidence. The only way you get that is through unconditionally valuing yourself. And if you want that to be logically coherent, then that requires you to respect the dignity of other people as well. Very true. Alrighty, this next one, this next one is is really spicy. So, uh, famous adult star. Uh, we'll call them an adult star. Lana Rhodes is now apparently against the industry. She said in an interview with Bradley Martin recently, the real Bradley Martin, not Noel, um, <laughs> that I just didn't have a great experience and that uh, I don't think it's great for other women or even men. Rhodes said, I am myself against pornography now from my own experiences. I don't think that having sexual relations with people that you've hardly know is good for your mental health or your heart. Okay. Imagine, imagine our surprise. So let me see here. Okay, so she also says, former performer also spoke about how she first got into porn, detailing her people-pleasing attitude that she now regrets. Being an 18 or 19-year-old girl, you just don't know how to say no. You want to make everyone happy, and I was very much a people-pleaser. <laughs> okay, so being a people-pleaser that, that means that you are insecure. Because when you're a people pleaser, what you're essentially doing, oops, I was zoomed in myself there. Uh, when you're being a people pleaser, what that means is that you say, all right, I don't feel good just doing what I think is right. I need to make sure other people like me. That means that like I feel this lack and I need their affirmation to fill, to fill it, all right? And I imagine that most girls who go into porn, it's either be out of just all financial need like maybe they're a drug addict or they got a kid to pay or sorry kid to feed or something like that <laughs> yeah i got a, some kid being like where's the money mom no uh, <laughs> they got a kid to feed or something so it's like either raw need um or they're just insecure and they're like oh not only can i make money doing this but i could also get all this kind of special attention you know people think i'm so hot and all this kind of thing um you know, there's a power trip and everything involved in there as well, for sure. So, you know, sounds like she's grown up a lot, which is awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I also think it's, you know, good that she's saying that, hey, porn's not good for people because it's not. It's not good for anyone involved in it. It's not good for the people performing it. It's not good for the people consuming it, right? The only people it's quote unquote good for is uh, the people making money off of it and, uh, I would say then even that it's it's bad for their souls. So <laughs> um, the the one thing though where I, I like have to wonder I haven't I have not looked at her. Let me see here. Well, apparently according to that article, she still does OnlyFans. Oh. She still posts spicy Instagram photos. 
So oh okay yeah obviously it's not like show this so okay so she's still like that's why I was that's where the the eye roll was starting where it's like okay yeah porn's bad but my career is still based upon being a sex object it's like uh okay well yes is it better than just straight fornication on camera I would say yes it is but it's actually still promoting the exact same values generally speaking maybe not the i maybe not just money for sex on camera it's not promoting that value as much it's just saying sexualizing yourself on camera for money is okay so that's that's weird and I, I imagine i i wonder if on her only fans she's actually still having sex or if it's naked pictures because i heard it was interesting to hear her say mm. it's strange to be having sex with people you what was it you don't know is that what she said hardly saying? know hardly yeah. know so what if you kind of know him? What if you're like, yeah, I kind of know that person. Yeah, I'm, I've been dating that person for three hours uh, or whatever <laughs> it is. Or, you know, I, I really like this person even. Is it okay to film yourself having sex with that person? Is that okay? Is that not so bad for the mental health? Like, while I'm seeing this as like, you know, the, the headline is a positive thing, culturally speaking. Um, I don't see... I don't see the kind of changes that would bring um, the kind of real whole heart conversion that would probably really make her happy. But the problem is she's she's got to deal with the devil right now where it's like if she actually stopped sexualizing herself, her fame and her money access, uh, they would get shut off a lot. Like she would lose a lot of what her current lifestyle is unless she could pivot. Honestly, actually, if she went like... <laughs> like trad Christian, she'd probably become even more popular uh, because then like, you know, she would be, have this whole spicy like media angle. Um, but the reality is that would still be a big gamble. And, uh, you know, it's like people, they just get hooked into this world. They get hooked into a lifestyle. They don't have other skill sets necessarily. I don't know if she does, um, but they just get a they, once you once you get a a feeling of that easy living like to be honest like that's that's not hard work right like taking some pictures of yourself every day it's not hard work um it's just uh yeah no I'm, you know what I, go ahead part, part of me like when i saw this there was a little bit of me that was like i wonder you know if someone who's this you know deep in the industry who has this many has this much success in the industry if they can, she's like you know, the, she's like one of the top like porn stars or something, right? I believe so. So, and you can see it's kind of funny. She's right there in that thumbnail right there. She's got like mom pants on and like mom shoes, but she's got a top that has like the Playboy emblem on it during <laughs> during the podcast interview. She's holding like this baby <laughs> with a Playboy thing. Like she's very all about that. But she can go yeah. out and say, you know, I had negative experiences. You would think that would actually maybe tell some people, hey, maybe I shouldn't get into this. Maybe I shouldn't pursue this. And part yeah, of me thought I, that might be the case, but I don't think that I don't. I don't think it's going to make the level of impact that I would like it to. I think if we want to see the industry kind of go down in flames, it's got to start with who's providing the uh well who's providing the demand for this product it's gonna have to start there and it's not gonna have it's probably not gonna start with porn stars saying okay i'm not gonna be a porn star anymore like there's always gonna be somebody you know what i mean oh yeah i mean like i I think you know the porn stars i think are being relegated to kind of like it's like there's there's continuous like gain like levels to this sex work sort of world right like the lowest level now would be like what like a a prostitute and then maybe like what a like like in terms of like desirability as a woman what would you rather be okay it's like lowest level like might would probably be like a prostitute you're actually forced to have sex with like random guys um then maybe uh what like stripper then maybe i don't know it's hard to say if a woman would rather be a stripper or a porn star. Uh, I imagine the porn star money is better. Like maybe it all depends. I actually don't know. But then now we have this new emerging level of like the OnlyFans. Model. Right. 
you know, the the cam girl or whatever, where it's like you're even like what what's required of you is less and less um, and you can make more and more money. And so it's like this new kind of like sex work hierarchy is always going to be enticing on some level to women because the technology is allowing women to make more and more money with less and less of the the, the nasty stuff, right? Which I think is probably a big reason why she quit to begin with. It's like, wait, hold on. I can get paid a multiple of 10 on what I was making previously doing these like hardcore scenes versus I take a picture, put it on the internet, and I get paid 10 times as much. I'm going to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And of course you're going to, it's, it's, it's almost like more I'm seeing like someone's like, yeah, my old job just didn't pay me enough and it worked me too hard. Uh, and... Well, no, I'm putting words in her mouth because she did say that she doesn't think it's good for people to be doing that kind of stuff. So I don't want to be too unfair to her on that that front. But it's it's just she's just found a better way to sell her sexuality. Um, right. And so it's like at the end of the day, like one of the the good things that I see that has emerged almost from meme culture and like a lot of a lot of things do emerge from the meme culture because memes are like these really kind of like primal things either they click with people because there's some kind of truth to them or they don't right and nofap actually came out of a meme it came out of like this you know right this like meme sort of joke challenge but then this additional thing is this anti-simp culture where it's like you know don't simp you know, it's like if you're a simp, you're you're a simp. It's a there's a negative connotation, right? Um, and so that's that's what every OnlyFans patron is. That is the definition of a simp, like absolutely. And so right. I think as men, it is our duty to continue to shame that sort of behavior. If you're paying someone on on their, their Instagram or, or sorry you're paying someone on their OnlyFans to get like pictures of of them or videos of them or whatever that's degenerate behavior you should feel ashamed of that because you're better than that you should be working on yourself improving yourself and then going out there and finding a girl and having a real relationship because you deserve better you don't deserve to just get like a not like pictures from a woman who n does not care about you at all Okay, you deserve a woman to actually love you sexually, intimately, right? You deserve something better. Don't lower yourself to this base form of operation, okay? And, and I think we, we as men, it's our duty to uphold that kind of ideal and to also help guys go through that transformation, not to tell them that, hey, you're a piece of shit for doing this and you're, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. It's like, you know, a lot of guys, they're in that position because they feel helpless. They feel like they can't change. They feel like they don't have a shot at girls because they're insecure, because maybe they, you know, have unfavorable genetics. Maybe they're just like really out of shape because, you know, they were not taught physical fitness or health or nutrition or anything growing up. And they just had a bunch of bad habits, years of bad habits. OK, maybe they're they're older. Who knows what it is? It's like there's a lot of reasons why guys would turn to that. And it's because it's the only thing that seems viable to deal with this deep yearning and longing inside of themselves for sexual satisfaction, okay? So the thing is, we wanna, we wanna recognize those truths, recognize the hardships guys face, recognize how hard it can be to you know, connect with a girl for real in this world. But still, we gotta hold the line that that is what you deserve. That is what you're meant for, not this artificial, pay for pics kind of bullshit or just scrolling porn kind of bullshit okay because it's worth to go through the transformation like live your life like this is the the pursuit of true sexual f fulfillment is one of the the greatest quests in any man's life it's going to be one of the things that will drive you to some of the greatest heights if you embrace it because your process of pursuing sexual fulfillment it's like you trying to find your princess might mean that you need to go storm a castle first okay this is the thing that like how many inventions how many uh wars how many uh innovations in society were driven by men seeking to earn their their status so that they could find a woman to to see them right so it's this is a a good thing to embrace it's it's right that it's hard because that difficulty that's what drives you to transform so did that make sense pete like what i'm, what I'm trying to say here is like we want to 
for sure condemn this stuff, but also offer a hand to those guys who, you know, actions we are condemning. 100%. Yeah. I mean, it is so much easier. It's so much easier, you know, it, even though it costs a little <laughs> so bit of money. Easier. It's like, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just settle for less. It's like, no, don't settle for less. You know, you, but the you thing is like, it's more. not really easier because it's easier in the moment, but then your life ultimately becomes more and more unbearable. Right. It becomes more and more painful. Uh, so that's what you got to realize is that like the, the more you live in denial of what you truly are meant for, the more jacked up you're going to feel in your life. Very true. And actually, this next clip kind of touches on this a little bit. So Luke sent me this clip for us to check out. This guy has some pretty interesting questions uh, about the future and what the future state of uh, quote unquote useless people will be. I, I, again, I think that the biggest question in, in maybe in economics and politics of the coming decades will be what to do with all these useless people. The problem is more uh, boredom and how, what to do with them and how will they find some sense of meaning in life when they are basically meaningless, worthless. My best guess at present is a combination of drugs and computer games as a solution for more. It's already happening. You look at Japan today, and Japan is maybe 20 years ahead of the world in, in everything, and you see all these new social phenomenon of, of people having relationships with virtual, uh, virtual spouses. And you have people who never leave the house and, and just live through computers. I've seen that guy. I think I've seen that guy before. I think he's like potentially, if I'm thinking of the right guy, he like might be one of the most like evil people I've like ever seen speak. He has some very, okay, so the rest of this clip, he talks about how rich people are going to be exempt from death and how, uh, yeah, what was the other sure. thing? And how like AI is going to take over the world and kill everybody basically. So it's a very interesting guy. He's an advisor to this Klaus Schwab guy. Right. Yes. You yes. Know? I'm pretty sure this is the guy who's like, you know, basically we can hack everybody's brain and it's right. awesome. And we're going to like make sure everybody follows our new world order. Like these are, he these are the actual, way. these are the real new world order people who actually use that terminology. It's like they are the great reset people. That's who Klaus Schwab and all those people are. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, this is even conspiracy. <laughs> Just look it up. Um, so, I mean, he's got a point on one level where it's like, Oh, what are, what are we going to do with all these useless people? All these just, you know, all they these do is... These worthless just, people. Was that what he said? Worthless he people. He said yeah. useless, worthless people. It's like, dang. Yeah. So, you know, what he's talking about, that's a true trend. Like, we're going to see that. Like, we're going to see people just uh, being basically controlled and living their life inside of uh, the Matrix. You know, being like, whether it's, you know, the Internet, whether it's the new Metaverse... Um, whether it's just plugging their dick into a USB flashlight, whatever it is, uh, they're going to be hooked into it. Um, and, you know, video games and then you throw some drugs on top of it. You know, it could be all kinds of drugs that could you know, keep people sedated and whatnot. And people will just be living these artificial sort of existences. And it is already happening. It's not just in Japan. It's for sure happening, you know, all over the Western world. Um, but what bothers me so much about this is like, you know, here's this guy who understands the the massive power that the people in power have, that the elites have. That's basically what he gets a boner about is like how much how powerful and cool the elites are um, and how much they can control the general populace. Well, it's like, here's an idea. What if we actually culturally engineered our societies to not create useless, worthless people, to actually, we build functional people, useful people, people with sense of inspiration, people with sense of meaning, with skills, with abilities, okay? Like, we could do that. <laughs> you could, like, if, if all the elites in the world were dedicated to building a powerful, thriving society where everybody could function well, we could do it. We have more than enough resource if we could just, like, stop bombing each other, stop trying to, you know, control, like, stir up tribal warfare and that kind of crap 
whether politically or actual warfare, if we just stop putting trillions of dollars into that shit and we put it into actually building strong cultures based on good values and productivity and like, you know, mutual respect and dignity, we could for sure do that. We have more than enough resources to do that. We have more than enough intelligence to do that. What we lack is the character. What we lack is the spiritual fortitude, the spiritual purity. We're just all so corrupt. Our, the, the people at the top are so corrupt because once they get that power, they just want to use it to make their life more stimulating rather than trying to actually do something good with it. And not all of rich people, not all elites, obviously, but like definitely enough of them. And so it's like it's left to people like me. <laughs> why, why, like, why am I building the self mastery club? Why am I trying to start this revolution of like getting guys to take responsibility for themselves, cut out their bad habits, so they don't end up like one of these drones? It shouldn't be me. It should be someone who's way smarter with who, way more money, but they're not. So it's me. <laughs> they're not doing it. Why are they not right. doing it? Man, you know, I'd like to think, oh, I would, I would do that if I had a million dollars, million billion dollars, I would do that, but apparently people who have million billion dollars are not doing this stuff. So what, what's the, what gives with that? I don't know, man. I, I, some, some of it I think is the people who do have money that do do good in the world. They're trying to address very acute problems like, you know, mm. starvation, you know, making sure people in Africa have water, um, all very, very important things, right? Like, you know, a lot of our charities and everything that goes to maybe it's taking care of single mothers or, you know, children's cancer research or something like like that's where the people with money with good intentions tend to put it but the problem with that is that in order to get more good for everyone is we need to get everyone more good okay and that's something that needs to be tackled on a cultural level that needs to be like tackled on the level of mm. how do we empower the individual how do we inspire the individual? It's not just empower, because like the the average individual has you know a tremendous amount of opportunity today in the Western world. Um, they're just not inspired, and they have no roadmap. They've got no path, um, and so that's why this is like what what's what's sad about this is because the only people really thinking about the cultural trends and really trying to do something about it <laughs> seem to be, in general, uh, like the bad guys who are trying to manipulate the culture for their benefit to make people, I bet, make the average person a better sheep, okay, a better cog, um, or you've got, you know, some small handful of like online influencers, right? You've got like the Jordan Petersons out there. You've got like, you know, uh, the arguably some of the political figures in different sides. Uh, and then you obviously you've got like religious figures, but not religion hasn't seemed to have found its traction on the digital sphere yet. I know there are Christian influencers and Muslim influencers and all kinds of stuff like that, but uh, I don't think it's fully made its transference yet. And so it's like what we're, we're looking for is some kind of, person or group or whatever to, to really start creating a deeper impact, I think. Um, yeah. Cultural impact. Yeah. Not just an economic one. And you know, there's a lot of people now, you know, you're listening to all these things. It's like, yeah, I guess there are a lot of people, but they don't stand out, I guess. It's like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Duh. You're supposed to solve world hunger. Good job. You know, right. Keep, keep, keep working, <laughs> keep working to solve it. But it's like these, these evil dudes, who want to control everybody it's like they're the ones that we notice because it's like oh look a bad guy you know let's focus on well him. they're the ones who are focusing on the culture yeah that's the that's that's my point is that they're right. the ones who are looking at the social engineering the good guys the good guys i don't see talking about the social engineering and the social engineering is the actual that's the biggest lever because if we can make a better society well then we're going to have more people able to do more good things and then we're going to have more hyper productive well adjusted morally aligned people which is way bigger impact than just you know one billionaire or trillionaire or whatever given money to some like so this one organization good cause. right it's like the cultural shift that is the biggest lever for world change and so the only people talking about the cultural shift are like 
a small handful of influencers, and then the bad guys, like especially the worst bad guys. <laughs> right. There are a lot of those influencer type people, like you like you mentioned too, but they don't they don't they don't stand out because they're not they're not the World Economic Forum. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Because you know what? <laughs> Guys like that, they don't want to be in the World Economic Forum, okay? They're like, right. I, I don't want to be a part of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, anyway, alrighty. So, actually, speaking of, you know, these these cultural influencers, so to speak, if you want to call them that, uh, Jordan Peterson recently tweeting about that plus size uh, swimsuit, plus size swimsuit model um, has people looking into the comical double standards in fashion. And I thought this clip here was pretty hilarious. Wait, wait, what did what did Jordan Peterson tweet? He tweeted out like basically expressing that the swim the swimsuit illustrated model was not uh, was basically not attractive was what he was trying to get at and that there was it was just a, a double a double standard is is a uh, can you find the tweet while we watch this clip because I want to hear yeah. what he actually said so I think he see. deleted it because he got so much back on it i'm not sure on that though let me find it i'm sure you can find it all right so let me see this uh this clip though for the people that are just listening can you describe the uh the image all right so look so look we have the women of all sizes on top uh we have women of all ages for sure on top you know we have an older lady on the right a couple older ladies in the middle you and know, ethnicities as well all ethnicities men shredded 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 chicken <laughs> Absolute dick skin peeled. Uh, okay, well, looks like we have uh, a couple different races here, uh, and then shredded. Well, no, like, it's not these... a couple of different races. There's only one, like, slightly caramel guy, but that's the same dude twice. Oh, that's the same dude. That's the same dude <laughs> twice. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, what, what is it? It's, I think the reason, because there's no, there's no body positivity movement for men. Have you noticed that? I mean, that's for sure... A thing like there's only body positivity for women um and i think that you know i think there's some understandable reasons why but like for women like so much women are taught that hey their value is in their looks okay that's not a a healthy thing to teach a young girl it's like hey you're only as good as you are physically attractive that can really cause a huge amount of psychological stress on women and um what that amounts to then is a generation of women who grow up with that stress and they feel like, you know what, screw it. I'm tired of this. I'm more than just my physical appearance. And then we've got the body positivity movement that comes out of that legit justified feeling of like, ah, I don't want to have this uh, essentially devaluation of my human worth. But then they take it further and they say, hey, uh, my appearance doesn't matter. In fact, it actually looks good, okay? Now that's that's a different point. It's a different point, you know? Standing up for your human dignity is one thing. Saying my objectively obese body is beautiful, that's another thing because that's not beautiful, you know? Not in the sense of what is, uh, <laughs> let's say, um, biologically accurate in the sense that like no one will have a, an automatic reaction of hey that's attractive kind of thing particularly the opposite sex um and i know there's there's some for sure some wiggle room in there because i mean you look at back at like old paintings of like what was considered beautiful in different times and you know they don't look like the bodies of today but in general like men are attracted to health women are attracted to health but the thing that's messed up, though, is that we got this body positivity movement for women, while men, it's always expected that, hey, you know, if you want to be physically liked and adored, well, then you got to be shredded. You got to be in awesome shape. And no one minds that expectation for men. Because I think there is this, in many ways, the justified idea that men have to become something. They are, they are supposed to strive to be better. Um, and is that fair? I mean, kind of, because our society depends on it. Society depends on it. Like, society doesn't depend on women constantly striving. At least not in the pursuit of continual status. Because prior to this 
age, women didn't have to. They didn't. Our world functioned, you know, you can call it dysfunctional as, as you want, but it functioned enough to get us all to this point with pretty much just the men doing the large external striving, okay? Women, they didn't have to do that. So, like, it's just this thing where it's, like, I think just built into us that we are meant to expect more of men because when we stop expecting things of men, everything crumbles. Like, if we don't expect anything of our men, well, then our your, your, your society sunk. Like, if men have no more expectations upon them, your society is completely done for. So, I think there's some, there's, that's kind of coded into us on some level. And uh, that kind of explains this. And is it fair? No, not at all. But that's the way things kind of stand. You know, uh, I can't find the original tweet, but according to this uh, Newsweek article, he said he called this plus size model, uh, quote, not beautiful. And that, quote, no amount of authoritarian tolerance is going to change that, which is quite funny. Um, I did find this tweet. I'll put it in the notes right now. But um, it's along those same lines. So it's clearly he's not backing down from his original stance. But he uh, he decided to take a, a break for Twitter uh, because uh, apparently it was not helping out his uh, his mental mood, I guess you could mm. say, which I can kind of understand. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're if you want to get if you want to, if you want to play that game, I don't think you should read the comments. Like, if you know right. that you're just going to be kicking the bees' nest, right, right? Don't read the comments. This is this is one of the things that I totally get. Like now, I understand now. Like looking at like Joe Rogan always talks about how he doesn't read the comments, um, and like, <laughs> or or he just, like during his whole recent biggest fiasco, he just said he was on mushrooms, and so it's like if you just avoid the toxicity, it's a lot easier for you to be authentic, because the reality right. is the people getting pissed at you, they're not they're not being pissed at you as a normal person to person interaction, they're being pissed at you as if you are some disconnected far off entity that they are that they can earn points by throwing the biggest tantrum possible in reaction to you, right? So that's not a normal human interaction. So it's like, it's it's totally fair if you don't want to expose yourself to that thing. I think Jordan Peterson should stay on the platform and just not read what stupid people say. That's that's my thoughts. But That is a good he's idea. Got, he's, he's, he's had uh, some, some issues, so I'll, I'll cut the man some slack. All righty. So actually speaking of Twitter, you, you're on Twitter... Um, all the time, more recently, and I was wondering if I could uh, kind of get you to expound upon some of the things you said recently. One of your sure. tweets recently that I liked was, stop doing things that you're conflicted over. If you aren't all in, then get out. And mm. I like that. But the thing is, what does conflicted mean, and how do we know if we're conflicted over something or not? What sure. do you mean by that? So conflicted means that you've got two different narratives running through your head at the same time while you do something. So, for example, let's say, you know, you just have your dinner and then it's like, oh, I'm going to eat some Twinkies. All right. And one part of you, it's really excited to eat Twinkies because it's conditioned to eat Twinkies at that time and it's craving them. It's like, mm, can't wait to have them. Uh, but then there's another part of you that says, this isn't really what I want to be doing. This is like kind of like, you know, kids food. And I don't you know, it's not a special occasion or anything like that. And it's definitely not helping my health or anything along those lines. Maybe I shouldn't be eating them. Right. That's a conflict. OK, that's 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 something that where if you go ahead and eat that Twinkie while you're feeling conflicted over it, it's going to make you weaker because that's what happens is like when you do things that you are conflicted over it steals energy from you because there's a part of you then like yeah you get a little spike in the moment but then this guilt lingers afterward and so your energy doesn't ramp up it kind of just falls flat and this actually leads into um another tweet that i did recently where i was talking about momentum can be gained or lost through seemingly insignificant actions the downside of this is that a single missed routine or indulgence can knock the wind out of your sails. The upside is that a tiny act of alignment can have you speeding along back on course. And what I'm talking about here is that like an, an, a choice doesn't just have what happens in the moment. Obviously, you know, there's cause and effect in the future with all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, if you eat a bunch of Twinkies, you'll get fat, that sort of thing. But there's another layer to this that happens like psychologically. Okay. There's a psychological energy that gets 
adjusted with each decision you make. So when you do something you're conflicted over, like think about it like this. It's like um, we all want to have momentum. What does momentum mean? Momentum means a psychological alignment toward the pursuit of what you truly want. Okay, and when you get into a groove, you can think of your momentum rising and rising, and that that that's experienced as a rise in your energy, a rise in your enthusiasm, a feeling of progress, a rise in your productivity. We want our momentum to rise because everything else good goes up with it. How we feel, what we do, um, all that kind of stuff, and then there you can have all these kinds of serendipitous sort of chain reactions that can lead to all other kinds of good stuff when you your high momentum. Okay. But when you do something you're conflicted over, that's like cutting your momentum off at the knees, okay? That's what knocks you down. And if you do something that you know is outright wrong, well, that's that's an extreme state of conflict where it's like, okay, I know this is wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's That cuts your momentum down. It's like, um, it's literally like you are rolling a ball along. And then if you put like a brick in front of the ball, it's going to slow down, right? Maybe it'll, you know, if it's going fast enough, it might bounce over it or something like that, but it's lost some momentum. It's lost some speed. And so much of life is about generating momentum, especially the higher levels of success. It's like you need to have extreme momentum and humans are capable of generating truly phenomenal amounts of momentum. And they do this by going all in on what they want. That means that they take out everything that is in conflict with that desire. And so if you can organize your desires to a clear set of things, right, and then you can cut out all the stuff that is in conflict with it, well, then you are going to be generating massive, massive amounts of momentum. And this is something that can be either added to or detracted from with even some of the smallest decisions in your day. Right. Something as small as like, um, you know, continue like hitting your snooze alarm, you know, two times in the morning or, you know, like I was saying, like you you have a, a meal where you just sort of lose it and you just, you know, pound a bunch of sweets or, you know, maybe you just have a few too many beers or something like that. These are the sort of things that usually keep people from busting into the higher levels of momentum. And so it's like l- identify these things. If you're conflicted over it, don't. Do it. And that'll be hard until you have a meaningful goal truly outlined in your head, right? If you're certain about what you're going to pursue, you know what it is and you are willing to sacrifice for it, it becomes much easier to say no to these momentum stealing sorts of things. And so, you know, that that's really what this, this those two tweets at least were about is like, you know, hey, these little moments, right? This is why, you know, speaking of Jordan Peterson, why um, his idea of cleaning your room has caught on so much culturally is because that's a little thing that can build positive momentum. It can start, you, you do that, well, all of a sudden you feel better. You're, you acted in, in the narrative, in the vein, in the, the spiritual vibration of a person who cleans their room. And the person who cleans their room is probably the same person who is productive, who eats well, who treats other people properly. Like, you know, there's a, a network of narratives that run through your mind. And when you activate one of them, it sensitizes your brain to continue on with the other ones. It's just that when, you know, we go in the opposite direction, we do something that we think is bad, at least on some part of our being, well, then all of a sudden the person who does that bad thing, they're not the person who's, you know, kicking butt. They're not the person who's on fire for life. And so our, like the literal charge of the neurons running through our brain moves into an unfavorable configuration and then you have to rebuild again. And so this is why really like constantly everything that you do can be used for building momentum or against it. And building that kind of awareness I think is is incredibly powerful. The big mo is so, it's it's so huge and I think most people haven't experienced it at all. And I think a big reason why is because they don't have a goal in mind or or they're not aware of the pain they stand to avoid by actually implementing this because it's very difficult to sit down and take care of all this stuff and remove all the bricks out of the way of the boulder if you don't know where you're rolling to you know right. what i mean yeah because so, it's work you know there's sacrifice it's like what are you sacrificing for it has to be compelling deeply compelling 
you, you have to really, you have to, it has to be something you want. It can't be, oh, you know, I think I'll go to college and I'll get a degree in this thing that I don't really care for so that I can basically get my parents off my back. Like, that's not going to be good enough for this to work for you, man. You got to pick something, you know, audacious. But a lot of your new content that's going to be releasing over the course of the next couple of weeks here is going to be kind of focused on finding what that thing is. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to be showing you how to find what is that thing that you really want and how to make the decision about it. Because that's not easy because sometimes when it's like, oh, well, I want this thing, but I want this thing. And you got conflict between them. How do we resolve that? Right. And then how do we practically pursue it? How do we do it without burning ourselves out? How do we do it? Uh, what if we do screw up? How do we get ourselves back on track? So like all that kind of stuff is stuff I'm going to be covering in exquisite detail over you know the coming weeks and months so uh, make sure you tune in for it guys thanks for watching this far if you haven't checked out the webinar there will be a link in the description as always so go ahead and click on that so that we can uh, hang out live together on the call you're going to learn some stuff that you're going to be able to apply right away even if you don't want to join the self master club you're still going to get a lot of value out of that web class so make sure you check it out absolutely guys click that link Ooh, yap. I'll see y'all in the next one.